Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's Monday, August 2nd. We're breaking down the short and sweet seven game main slate that we have over on DraftKings today. As far as pitching goes, there's not a lot of great options here. It's mainly about the bats today. So we're just going to try to get by with our pitchers and hopefully our bats can save the day for us. And if you do find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. You know, follow me over on social media in order to find me using the handles in the bottom hand corner of your screen. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon and get access to some extra content, link is down below in the description for that. But you can get access to the projections, the optimizer, ownership projections, rankings, cheat sheets, data sheets, Discord committee, all that fun stuff. Link can be found down below. And there was a nice little update on my optimizer. It's more visually appealing now. There's some extra added features, including more in-depth stacks and things like that. And you can now get access to other sports once you get access to just one sport here. So you can add the NFL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MMA, all in one on the optimizer. If you just look at the drop down there. So nice little added feature there, which I think should help everybody out. And it is the beginning of the month, so it is one of the best times you can sign up over on Patreon to get your best bang for your buck. And there's a lot of extra content over there, so I think you will enjoy it. And last but not least, this video is sponsored by Prize Picks. I'm sure most of you know what it is by now, but if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports. Simplified, just you versus the projections. There's no Sharks, 150 max contests, or anything like that. Just you versus the props that they offer each and every single day. And if you look hard enough, you can find some pretty soft lines to take advantage of. And as of right now, if you're a new signing over on Prize Picks, you can get a free money bonus up to $100. That's an instant deposit match up to 100 bucks, so it's free money. Why not use it to your advantage when you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you at either pricepicks.com or you can use the link down below in the description. But I think that's it for the plugs for the most part, so without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as per usual, we'll start with the pitchers and move on to the bats. Now, I do want to mention I'm going to talk about the bats a little bit differently than I normally do, so I think it'll be a little bit more efficient here, and it should shorten the videos maybe a little bit. But as far as pitching goes today, like I was mentioning in the intro, there's not a lot to like here at Pitcher. And I feel like I say that almost every single day, but pitching has been rough the past month, it feels like. And now that we really don't have any great pitchers here, it's going to get even tougher here. But we'll start off top with Tyler McGill at 9600 bucks. He's looking like our SP1 in the slate, and he only has like 30-ish innings on the season, so it's hard to put too much into it, but he has looked pretty good, and he's facing a AAA squad Miami right now, which just does not really have anybody good in that team. Yes, I know Jazz is there, and there's a couple of maybe okay bats, but they shipped off Marte, they shipped off Duvall. Both guys have plenty of pop in their bat, and their lineup looks really, really rough right now. It's only a 3.26 implied team total against them. It's a very pitcher-friendly park over Miami, one of the best places in all of baseball to pitch. He's a slight favorite here, 6K prop, and in limited sample size this season. McGill's actually been pretty darn solid. I mean, a nice 2 ERA. Now, his XFIP and Sierra are close to two runs higher, but even then, the XFIP's still below four, and as is the Sierra at three and three quarters there, a 27.1% K rate, only giving up a 121 ISO, a 30% hard contact rate, and about a homer per nine. And like I said, this is a great matchup versus Miami. Some of these splits still do include guys like, you know, Martez and Duval splits, but on the season, they're still striking at around 25.5% versus righties. Only a 136 team ISO and 87 WRC plus, and like I mentioned earlier, they shipped off two of their better players, so some of these numbers are inflated a little bit, so those will kind of even out as the season progresses. But Tyler McGill, I realize he's a bit expensive and never feels great paying nearly $10,000 for the kid, but I think he's actually pretty much the best option on the slate here, just raw points-wise. And then Anthony Destefani, 9300 bucks. so I'm not in love with Destefani here. He was kind of having good game after good game, and he kind of found a little bit of a rough patch recently, but decent matchup here versus Arizona. Now, I actually have some interest in a couple of Arizona lefty one-offs here, just because of their price points, and Destefani, if you're going to use anybody versus him, you want it to be lefties because he does struggle versus them, but I think he's an okay play here. I feel like there's a lot of win equity. I think the Giants sack looks really good tonight, and that's pretty much the same reason I like these other pitchers here, because I think they're going to pick up the win tonight, which the four-point bonus on this pitching slate could go a long way here. But Destefani is an okay pitcher. He doesn't really walk a ton of bats, but he doesn't really get too much strikeouts. He's got a 23.3% K rate. The X is below 4. The ERA looks really good at 3.1. The Sierra is just above 4 there, but I'm not going to complain too much. Doesn't give up too much power. 125 ISO, 32% hard contact rate, about a homer per 9. Not too far off of Tyler McGill's numbers, and it's also a larger sample size. If we're looking at the splits this season for the Diamondbacks versus righties, nothing too scary here. Over a 24% carry. They do walk quite a bit, but only a 135 team ISO and an 82 WRC+. Plus. So while that probably won't be the biggest strikeout matchup in the world, I think that's the funny. could give us like five to six solid innings, maybe give up a run or two, get a handful of strikeouts and pick up the win, which wouldn't be too bad given the other pitching options today. Then dropping down to Eric Lauer, $9,000. Trust me, I don't really want to pay $9,000 for a guy like Eric Lauer. He's a very boring pitcher. 
and he's facing a low strikeout team in Pittsburgh, and the guy only has a 23% K rate, so kind of similar to Stefani. I can't imagine we're going to get too many strikeouts here, but just from a run prevention standpoint and win equity, he looks like a pretty solid play here. He's a very heavy favorite, 69% chance for the win, 5K prop over in Vegas, and only a 3.3 implied team total against him, which I believe is the second lowest on the slate, only behind the Marlins. And his numbers on the season, a 3.78 ERA, which is okay, 4.27 X, 4.37 CR, like I said, kind of a low K right here, does walk some bats. But doesn't give up too much power, low hard contact rate allowed, about a homer and a half per nine. And Pittsburgh is a team you don't typically have to worry about too many power threats here. Only a 121 team ice at lefties this season, an 83 WRC plus. And like I said, give me that 4.1 bonus and at $9,000, we could be looking at around you know, from like 15 to 20 points, which is not going to kill you at 9000 bucks. And then Andrew Heaney, $8,600. So he is a tournament play for me. I guess you could play him in cash games because I think the you know I think the New York Yankees are pretty much the best stack on the slate, and I'd be very surprised if as long as he doesn't get blown up here, he should be able to pick up the win. Now I don't really like using lefties versus Baltimore because they actually do kind of profile pretty well versus left-handed pitching. So I do have some concerns there because if we're looking at their splits when you compare them from righties to lefties here, so to righties they only have an 84 WRC plus. A 152 team ISO, 292 Wobe, and a 25% K rate. But versus lefties, the WRC Plus climbs to 107, a 7% walk rate, 164 team ISO, only striking out 22% of the time, and a 325 Wobe. So there is some concerns here for Andrew Heaney. It's a hitter from the park in New York, obviously not quite as bad as it is in Baltimore, but we're mainly just chasing the strikeout right here. It sits over 28%, but the one thing with Andrew Heaney is he will give some power, some fly balls, and homers, so we got to be a little bit careful here. Guys like Trey Mancini, Austin Hayes, Santander, uh, Ryan Mountcastle, Pedro Severino, all those guys do have some pop versus lefties, so it's a bit of a scary spot here for Andrew Heaney, but I think there's a lot of win equity. I mean, we really shouldn't play pitchers just because we think they can pick up the win, but given the options we have today, that's something I'm trying to do here. Only 3.72 implied team total against him. The Yankees team total is sitting close to 6 today, so I'd be very surprised if Heaney does not pick up the win. Very heavy favorite, 6K prep. I think he's a decent option here, even though the matchup isn't exactly the favorite of mine. And I think a lot of people are going to see Baltimore here. They're just going to play Andrew Heaney because they think Baltimore sucks, which they're not the greatest offense out there, but they, they're all right versus lefties. So I'm a little bit concerned there, but at the price point, I think he's okay. And then if we want to do a complete punt option here, we have Dane Dunning at 6300 bucks, who I think is actually a pretty talented pitcher. But the problem is they never let him work too deep into games. Like the pitch counts, we're never going to see that in the upper 90s or 100s or anything like that. He's always limited a little bit. He just has to be efficient with his pitches to make it, you know, deeper into the game, which he has done a couple times this season. But yeah, I just hate rostering pitchers on pitch counts. But at that price point, it kind of makes up for it because I think Dane Dunning should be like a like on this slate, maybe like seventy five hundred dollars, something like that. So the fact that he's only sixty three hundred bucks, even though the pitch count's pretty low, it kind of makes up for it with the price tag. And it's a pretty bad Angels lineup right now. Yes, there's Otani, but outside of Otani, I mean, who are you really scared of? Yes, Justin Upton. Yes, he's have some power this season, but he's not a big batting average guy, and you can certainly strike him out. So at that price point. I do think he's a decent play here. I won't look at the splits because there's a lot of guys missing that are normally in the lineup, so I think that's kind of a waste of time. But Dave Dunning's a solid pitcher. I mean, 3.68 XFIP on the season, which is better than his 420 ERA, 23.5% K rate. Doesn't give up a ton of power, only a 136 ISO and a 55% ground ball rate with less than a homer per nine. So it's 6300 bucks if you want a pump play and you need some expensive bats. Like if you want to full on stack the Yankees, which they are very expensive now with the additions of Joey Gallo and Anthony Rizzo, you might have to go down to Dane Dunning. And while he won't have the highest ceiling, he might be able to get you by at like a 12 or 15 point outing. But as far as pitching goes, I think that'll be pretty much it. So we'll move over to the bat. And like I was saying in the beginning, I think we should try to change the way we talk about the offenses here. Instead of going position by position and just kind of repeating the same thing for each player that plays on the same team throughout the entire video, why don't we just talk about this like stacks? Because that's the main thing about MLB DFS. We want stacks. We don't really try to do one-offs in the entire lineup because that's just that's more so you know, geared towards cash games, which you could still try to figure it out when we do it like this. But anyway, we'll start with the New York Yankees here. They're my favorite stack in the slate. They get a great matchup versus Corey Lopez, and I assume they're going to be pretty popular here. The additions of Joey Gallo and Anthony Rizzo definitely made this stack more expensive, but it just makes it more exciting as well. And they're playing in Yankee Stadium. They have the highest implied team to on the slate. Jorge Lopez is not a very good pitcher. Gives up a 183 ISO on the season. 220 to lefties. A little bit better versus righties, but I think we can still use the entire lineup here. Plus the Orioles bullpen. Obviously not that great. Now, do I wish they were in Camden Yards? Yes, but it's still a hitter from the park in New York. Now, looking at the lineup here, DJ Mayhu, he's probably one of those guys that I'll end up leaving off because, yeah, he's a good hitter. He's a nice contact guy, but the guy doesn't really have too much power whatsoever, and you're paying over $5,000 for him. 
The only way I'm getting DJ LeMahieu in is if I somehow I don't have just enough money at first base or third base to fit him in if I'm doing a full-on like one through five stack, but I don't really think he's one of the best plays here on this team. But guys like Joey Gallo, Aaron Judge, Anthony Rizzo, Giancarlo Stanton, those are the guys that are going to eat up most of the ownership. Those are the guys with plenty of power. Joey Gallo, he crushes right-handed pitching for power, and Jorge Lopez gives it up to lefties, especially in the power department. Aaron Judge, like I said, I prefer the lefties here, but he's got plenty of power, whether it be a lefty or righty in the mound, and he's pretty cheap at $4,800. Joey Gallo is super expensive at $5,400. Like, it's pretty hard to fit him in, but just raw points-wise, he's going to grade out as one of the best plays in the entire slate here. Aaron Judge, like I just mentioned, a little bit cheaper, $4,800. I feel like he's easier to fit in. So if you had to pick between the two, like, yeah, I'd prefer Gallo, but Aaron Judge is going to grade out better on a point per dollar basis. Anthony Rizzo, 4700 bucks. Ever since he went to the Yankees, he's been hitting pretty well. Batting cleanup here, only $4,700. Left and ready matchup versus Jorge Lopez. Going to be one of the top overall options on the slate for me. Then John Color Stanton, 4100 bucks. He's pretty cheap, batting in the five hole here. Plenty of RB opportunity. I like all the Yankees quite a bit today. So I think at that price point on a loaded lineup, I think Stanton does make some sense here. And then guys like Laboratories, Gary Sanchez, Brett Gardner, Tyler Wade, those are kind of fill ins. More so Brett Gardner and Tyler Wade being fill ins, although Laboratories at that price point hasn't really hit for power whatsoever this season. So I don't really love playing him. I liked him when he was a little bit cheaper and hits a little bit higher in the order, but with the addition of all the new players, Obviously, you can get bumped down, and same goes for Gary Sanchez. I mean, yeah, he's got some pop in his bat, but unless you have money for an expensive catcher day, which you might if you just spend on for pitching, but as of right now, I can't really see Gary Sanchez being like a core play for me by any means. Just maybe like an add-on if you want to stack the Yankees and you have enough money at the catcher position. But that's kind of it for the Yankees here. The entire lineup is pretty much in play. All these guys have quite a bit of power besides a few like Laboratories, DJ Mayhew, Brett Garner, and Tyler Wade, but I mean, right in the middle of the meat part of that order man Aaron Judge, Joey Gallo, Anthony Rizzo, John Color Stanton, one of the top options on the entire slate. That does reflect in the price tag. There is some cheap offenses that we can kind of offset that with today if you want to like stack them with a cheaper offense. Then another stack I like quite a bit today is the San Francisco Giants here. They are facing Tyler Widener who is a pretty average pitcher at best. He's going over a 200 ISO in the season. The K rate's like around 20%. Just not that great of a pitcher and I think the Giants do it out pretty well here. They have an implied team total of 5.4, and the team's not as expensive as the New York Yankees, and they're in a really good spot here on the road in Arizona, and you get those guaranteed nothing at bats as well. But we'll start up top here with Lamont Wade, 3500 bucks, Pretty cheap here. I feel like he might be one of the chalkier players on the entire slate. People are going to see the high implied team total, the lefty already matchup. He's leading off, and he's actually shown some good power this season, batting over 250 in the ISO department. Chris Bryant, fresh face here. I feel like he'll be popular just because of that, because, you know, people like players that just got into a new team. Sam's going to go for Anthony Rizzo and Joey Gallo, but he's, you know, he homered in his debut. He's hitting in the two spot here, and I like all the Giants here quite a bit today. Mike Yastrzemski, he's shown power this season. Buster Posey, has been one of the better hitting catchers in baseball. Alex Dickerson, you get that lefty already match up there. Same goes for Brandon Crawford. Bottom of the order, kind of fill-ins here, but one more floor is I prefer him versus lefties, but if you just need a cheap second baseman or a third baseman, you could throw him on there if you can't quite afford a guy like Chris Bryant. You do want to full stack up the Giants. And then at the very end there, I really don't have interest in him at 3400 bucks. I feel like there's better cheap outfielders. Overall, I do think this is a pretty solid stack today. Definitely one that's popping up quite a bit in my projections. And I like that they're on the road. Good matchup. And the Arizona bullpen has not been that great this season. So if they can get to widen early on, it should be still fine throughout the rest of the game there. But I really love Lamont Wade. Mike Yastrzemski and Alex Dickerson it look like some of the better plays on today's slate once you factor in their price points and the matchups and all of the things like that. But definitely a big fan of Lamont Wade today. Probably will be like a cash game lock in my opinion. Then dropping down to another stack that I have plenty of interest in today. It's going to be the Milwaukee Brewers here versus Bryce Wilson with a team total above five here and a hitter from the park at home in Milwaukee. And Bryce Wilson has been pretty bad versus left-handed bats this season. If we're looking at his overall splits, he's just not been that great of a pitcher this season overall. 219 ISO given up over a 5 exit and only a 15% K rate. But if we look specifically versus lefties, it's smaller sample size, obviously, but only a 10% K rate, a 6 xFIP, 7.5% walk rate, 36% hard contact rate, and close to three homers allowed per nine innings and over a 400 wOBA but with a 279 ISO. So I think all the lefties make plenty of sense here. The righties are still in play, but if you just want to use the lefties as like a mini stack with another team, I have no problem with that, but guys like Colton Wong, Omar Narvaez, Rowdy Telez, Eduardo Escobar, new addition here. He's a switch hitter, so you can count him as a lefty as well. All these guys make plenty of sense for me. I mean, Jackie Bradley's like, he's dirt cheap, but I mean, he's dirt cheap for a reason because he's been pretty terrible this year. But the main appeals here, Colton Wong, Omar Narvaez, Eduardo Escobar, and Rowdy Telez. But guys like Willie Adamas, he's been hitting the ball well recently over a 200 ISO on the season. Obviously, Al Garcia, these guys are in play, but 
do prefer the lefties here, but I do think they make for a decent stack today. And I don't think they'll be quite as popular as like the Yankees or the Giants on today's slate, but they are in a pretty good spot with a team total above five, and Bryce Wilson is just not very good whatsoever. And after the Yankees, Brewers, and Giants, I think there's a couple of decent contrarian stacks today if you want to try to get different, because those teams will be pretty popular. So if you want to look for some lower ownership plays here, I think the Orioles are in a decent spot here versus Andrew Heaney. I know I talked him up as a viable pitcher, and there's a good chance I'll be playing plenty of Andrew Heaney tonight. But in the same time, it could go south very easily. And most times, an Andrew Heaney is chalk. It typically does not work out. Now, they have a team total below four here, so I can't imagine the masses are going to you know, flock to the Orioles, but that's why they're more of a tournament play here. But guys like Cedric Mullins, Austin Hayes, Trey Mancini, Ryan Mountcastle, Anthony Santander, Urias, Severino, Franco, these guys are actually decent versus left-handed pitching. Like if we look at their overall splits this season, which I know Cedric Mullins is not popping up here, which I need to fix, but Austin Hayes versus lefties, he's got over a 200 ISO, Trey Mancini close to a 300 ISO, Ryan Mountcastle over a 200 ISO, Santander obviously doesn't have the best of numbers in the world, but he's only $2,000, so all you really need is a hit and a run there. Ramon Urias, again, not that great, but I mean, he's a cheaper option here. But Pedro Severino is a catcher, is decent versus lefties batting close to 280. But I mean, guys like Hayes, Mancini, Mountcastle could definitely do some damage versus him because we know Andrew Heaney, he's a guy that will give up plenty of fly balls and power, which those guys do specialize in versus lefties. So if you want to try to get contrarian here. I think a couple of the Orioles do make some sense. Maybe not a full-on stack, but you could do a mini stack of the order like from one through four or one through five or something like that. And it's definitely not going to break the bank besides guys like Tedek Mullins and Trey Mancini. It's kind of a scary stack to do, but I do think it's somewhat viable today if you want to try to get leverage on the Andrew Heaney ownership. I also think the Philadelphia Phillies are somewhat viable today. I'm not in love with the matchup versus Josiah Gray, recent addition from the LA Dodgers. But I can't imagine he's going to last too long to the game here. And they should see a decent chunk of the Washington bullpen, which hasn't exactly been great this season. And it's not just because they went off yesterday, which they did. They scored a couple of touchdowns. And they had a two-point conversion mixed in there as well. I want to say they ended with around 15 points. But, you know, the Phillies, I mean, guys like Bryce Harper, Brad Miller. Some of the lefties here do look pretty good. Didi Gregorius, Brad Miller, Bryce Harper. But you can always throw in guys like JT Ramuto, Gene Segura, Reese Hoskins. I mean, some power in those bats and some decent batting averages. So, don't love the Phillies today, but I do think they're decent, and I don't think they're going to get a ton of ownership either. But you know, Bryce Harper, if you have the money for an expensive one-off, guys like Real Muto, Bryce Harper are definitely the tops on my list today. And to round this out, I'm not really a big fan of stacking the Diamondbacks here. They only have a 4.1 implied team total. Anthony DeStefani is not a bad pitcher whatsoever. But a couple of these guys at their price points, I think, are fine if you're trying to get a cheap homer. Cattell Marte, $4,000. He should probably be more expensive than that. Leading off here. If you're stacking the Diamondbacks, you have to play Cattell Marte, but if you're just looking for some cheap one-offs here, as Dribble Cabrera is only $2,700, he's a switch hitter, so he'll always have the platoon advantage here. Cole Calhoun, dirt cheap at $3,100, some cheap lefty and righty power. Christian Walker, I prefer him versus lefties, but at $2,600, guys like him and Carson Kelly do become in play, but I'm mainly interested in like as Dribble Cabrera, Cole Calhoun, and Cattell Marte at their price points. But I'd probably only be mini stacking here. I can't really find myself full on stacking the Diamondbacks today. But if you want to do like a five-man Yankee stack mixed with a real dirt cheap Diamondback stack today, try to get leverage on some potential Anthony DeStefani ownership. I don't think it's one of the worst ways to go today. They won't grade out the best projection-wise, but projections aren't super important to baseball because crazy things can happen. But I think a couple of these guys do make some sense tonight. But with that being said, I think that'll be pretty much it for the video. So I hope it was helpful. And if it was, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. I'll be here all season long trying to help you guys become better MLB DFS players. And I do cover other sports as well, including the NFL and NASCAR and NBA, which is only on Patreon for me. But obviously that's not in season right now. And if you don't follow me over on social media, you know where to find me, ChrisPenel16 on Twitter, CPen16 over on IG. And if you want to help support the channel over on Patreon, link is down below in the description for that. But it's the first of the month, or I guess the second of the month, but it's still one of the best times to sign up if you are interested. So check it out if you want. You get access to everything here, my entire spreadsheet, my Discord community, my projections, Optimizer, which is newly updated. And there's every single sport on there, rankings, cheat sheets, and all the good stuff link can be found down below. And don't forget this video was sponsored by Price Picks. I'm sure most of you know what it is by now. But if you don't, it's Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified, just you versus the projections that they have on their site each and every single day. And as of right now, you can get a free money bonus up to $100. That's an instant deposit match up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $100 for free. So it's free money. Why not use it to your advantage when you use code CPEN and tell them I sent you at either pricepicks.com or if you use the link down below. But I think that's pretty much it. I will stop rambling and I hope you guys enjoyed the start to your work week.